So this is one of the few Byte magazines I don't actually own. It came out in December 1977, but I sure wish I did because I'm such a big Star Trek fan. So really nice cover. And what we'll do is we'll jump out to basically this uh, thumbnail view. And we're going to find the article that inspired the cover. And we'll read through that. So we have Kurt Schmucker, mathematician, Department of Defense, Washington, D.C. And we have Robert Tarr, electronics engineer, and same, Department of Defense. The article title is The Computers of Star Trek. And notice it's NCC-1701. Introduction. The world of Star Trek represents many things to people. To the majority, it is an escape into a time when man is once again challenged by the vastness of his own or of his known universe and can assume the now lost role of the explorer of unknown territories with their inherent but also unknown dangers. To others, it is the tale of man's final triumph over his own inhumanity, a world where race, color, and background are not points of contention and disunity, but are rather different reference points from which a society can grow together in peace. In this case, infinite diversity and infinite combinations yields a whole which is greater than the sum of its parts. To yet others, it is a time when science and the mysteries of nature are more clearly understood, an understanding which brings forth a technology beyond one's wildest imagination. And you can pause here if you want to read more about the authors, but I'm going to skip that. So this paragraph connects us um, from Star Trek to computer technology, and this paragraph uh, says... Many of these things were already predicted by science fiction writers. Many of the things we see in Star Trek, that is. Uh, this paragraph is where it really gets good. Problems like voice I.O., automatic programming in the natural language, and computer analysis of complex, ill-defined problems are handled routinely. So the paragraph ends with many questions about how or when can we see these technologies come into existence. Very little, if any, technical information is available on the Enterprise computers. Only vague, non-technical statements are ever made by the captain or the science officer. Quote, deep in the heart of this ship are our computer banks. They operate the entire ship. They also contain the whole of human and humanoid knowledge. They are indisputably reliable. Our lives depend on them. In a matter of a few seconds, we can obtain an answer to any factual question regardless of its complexity. Down here it says the portions of the Starfleet technical manual, which recently has been made available to other than Starfleet personnel, do not include the ship's computer systems schematics section or the ship's computer's uh, maintenance schematics section. So this essay will speculate on various hypotheses supported by the user level information available and will attempt to show the hardware and software possibilities. Let's jump to the quote under the picture. Computer, I want a complete rundown of all references to the design of computer systems for Enterprise class ships in the first quarter century of Byte magazine. The computer's response is, yes, sir, but are you prepared for recursion? Okay, so the world of Star Trek takes place in the late uh, 22nd or early 23rd century. In that era, the United States... The United Starship Enterprise is perhaps the second largest scientific and technical achievement resulting from the combined technologies of a unified portion of the Milky Way in the 22nd century portion of the intelligent life forms of the galaxy, federation-sized planetary unions, police actions, so enforcement of federation law, investigation of criminal actions, scientific missions, so new explorations, data gathering, diplomatic assignments, and missions of mercy. It may be of benefit to compare the Starship Enterprise to its namesake of the 20th century, the United States Aircraft Carrier Enterprise, in order to get a grasp, grasp of the scope involved in the construction of such a vessel. vessel. So I'll skip the history lesson. Let's look at this really cool ad that's going to interrupt the reading of this article. And this one is even more beautiful than the last one. Good job, Apple. 
nice coffee cup color. We'll scroll past um, the details of this Apple II computer. So it looks like that took up three pages. Okay, I had to scroll all the way down to page 172. As you see here, it says this is continued from page 14. So they're talking about incidences where the computer had to intervene. The amount of linguistic, criminological, and biographical data that would have to be stored online to answer these types of questions almost defies belief. And here we are in 2023 with large language models doing that all the time now. And at the time of this recording, it's the end of 2023 because we're in December. So here they note how amazing the MAN computer interface is. Next, all the computer terminals are equipped for audio I.O., full graphics including the display of photographic data, and can be tied into any of the Starship's numerous data banks. The voice commands that can be processed by the ship's computers are not from a small set of commands. For example, in yellow alert. Rather, they are completely unrestricted English. Examples of typical commands are compute to the last digit the value of pi to the... Oh, not to the, but pi. I thought they were saying... I thought that was an exponent for a second. Pi to the power of 29. But sure, a Star Trek computer could probably do that. But yeah, I remember in all types of Star Trek series, not just the original, they have long conversations with a computer. Correlate hypothesis. Compare with life forms register. Question, could such an entity with dis within discussed limits exist in this galaxy? Engineering Officer Scott reports warp engines damaged but repairable. Ascertain precise degree and nature of damage. Compute nature and magnitude of forces responsible. And program possible countermeasures. Library computer, give me everything you have on a man named or known as Kodos the Executioner. After that, a check on an actor named Anton Carradine. I have no idea what this is a reference to. Well, let's move on to hardware innovations. If you know this, though, definitely leave a comment. So with the immense amount of data that must be stored online and available for fast access, one area of technology that must have been highly developed in the Star Trek era is memory technology. A reasonable estimate of the size of the Enterprise database is 10 to the 22 bits. To, a tree, to achieve a retrieval in a matter of seconds, an effective memory access time of 10, should that be negative 15 seconds, is required. No operational memory devices today offer the necessary fast access times, along with a high capacity, low power consumption, and small vo volume. And, oh yeah, it's December, I told you, so this perfect holiday cards ad is, is a good one. Um, but what I'm trying to draw your attention to down here is this article was written in 1977. So when they say things like what I just read, no operational memory devices today offer the necessary fast access time, we're talking about 1977. They do say, however, a number of devices here, there too, hitherto restricted to the research lab are becoming operational, which have some or all of the desired qualities. These include the so-called electronic disks, the megastore of the Ampex Corporation, and the Josephson Junction devices. Electronic disks are memory devices employing various new technologies which do not involve mechanical movement, but which possess the capacity of fixed or movable head disks, along with the dramatically fast, uh, faster access times. They are just now beginning to become operational. Some problems exist in a few of these technologies. For example, memory volatility is a slight problem in the electron beam addressed electronic disk. Man, and now we have SSDs and M2, NVMe. Uh, I get the sense, though, that we should still be further along. Let's read a little bit about the Megastore of the Ampex Corporation. Megastore uses magnetic core, a technology that has been on the decline since the advent of smaller and faster semiconductor memories. The use of Megastore as a mass storage device is now a fact. The Josephson Junction is another entirely new technology which could be used for memory. The Josephson Junction box is 
a superconducting tunnel junction first demonstrated in 1962 by Brian Josephson at Cambridge. In one form, it exhibits a very rapid switching phenomenon between two modes of junction tunneling, which enables the device to be used as a flip-flop register. The jun Josephson junction, as far as memory technology is concerned, is over 15 years away. One difficulty with this technology is that it operates at the extremely cold temperature of liquid helium and therefore requires a sophisticated external refrigeration unit. And look at the ad we have here to the left. Talk to your computer. I think this ad was so appropriately placed within this Star Trek article. So we'll skip past the terminal section, the um, plasma screens projection section, and come to software innovations. Apart from the hardware innovations necessary to realize the level of computer technology present in Star Trek, there are software and theoretical developments which must be made. So the first one is speech recognition here. I don't see anything very technical, so skipping past that. Ooh, natural language processing. If only those two authors of this article could see the NLP technology we have today. I didn't know there was a Newman Inc. We'll scroll down past the Tarbell floppy disk interface ad, and uh, they go on and on about the speech recognition. Again, this is 1977. This is an interesting section. They're telling us exactly where on the Enterprise the computers are located. Next to the ad for static RAM is a section about memory requirements for the Enterprise. At present, the Library of Congress contains over 72 million volumes. Hmm, what's uh, compression like at the time of this article, I wonder? And now that we're into the footnotes, I think that's it for the Star Trek article. Oh, one of the footnotes uh, has a reference to something Noam Chomsky uh, wrote about. Okay, so technically, b before these two little breakout squares of information, uh, this right here was the last paragraph. So I'll read the last part here. They finish by saying, perhaps Star Trek does give us a glimpse of the future of the computer. Perhaps not. In any case, one can agree with the Enterprise's science officer when he says, there's one thing we can say, they will have many interesting adventures.